Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to MNC Group Investor Forum 2022. Thank you for attending today's event at group meeting of PT MNC Studios International TBK. I'm Victoria Veni on behalf of MNC Group, and I will be your moderator today. The team strengthening Indonesia's resiliency and transformation in line with the effectiveness of various strategic efforts by the government in boosting economic recovery during the pandemic. In addition, the G20 presidency is the right momentum for Indonesia to contribute to the global economic recovery through the implementations of various strategies, transformation, integration, and synergy in alliance. The four-day conference will be attended by domestic investors and a network of investor support who have partnered with our bank region in more than 125 countries. The event consists of three days corporate forum with the leaders of Indonesia's listed company and close with the highlight of the event, namely Macro Day, that welcome all participants to attend keynote addresses and dialogues from Indonesia's policymakers and capital market regulators. The registration for Macro Day, which will be held on March 17, 2022, is still open. The participants will have the opportunity to win the door prize worth a total value of 75 million rupiah. And for more information, please visit www.mnzinvestorforum.com. To start this morning session, please allow me to give a warm welcome to Mr. Omar Giri Valiapan, Investor Relations Director, who will present the business updates of PT MNC Studios International TBK. Hi, good morning, Pa. Good morning, Vinny. Thank you very much. As we all know, PT MNC Studios International TBK is part of the media business within MNC Group. So without the further ado, we will start with company presentations, followed by Q&A session. If any of you have any questions, participants can just type it on the chat box to me as the moderator of this session, and I will read it to Mr. Omar. When typing your questions in chat box, please please state your name and your company, or you can also use the raise hand feature, then I will lead the Q&A session. Now I would like to invite Mr. Omar to start the company presentations. Mr. Omar, the screen is yours. Thank you very much, Vanny. Uh, good morning to everyone and welcome to the MNC Digital Forum, Investor Forum. Uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic morning. For those of you who, who are active in your lifestyles, I hope you all feel energized. Uh, it's a significant day today uh, for two reasons. It's actually uh, our group chairman's wife's birthday, and it's also my father's anniversary. So 49 years of marriage uh, with my parents. So I, I, I quote something from my dad. He's a big fan of Shakespeare, and it's very simple. Lend me your ears. So we have 40 minutes or 45 minutes. I'll talk you through the business. I'll talk you through our ambitions. And, and you know, how is it changing the landscape for digital media in Indonesia today? Uh, let me begin with what happened last Friday. So I think for those of you that follow the business, uh, MSIN or MNCN and MNC Group, these are household names in Indonesia today. Uh, last Friday was a, was a significant event for the business. And it's significant because it actually signifies the metamorphosis of Indonesia's largest content and digital entertainment group. Uh, what do I mean by that? So let's, let's uh, go through some of these slides. So the corporate structure of MNC uh, MSIN, or now MNC Digital, uh, has been approved as of the EGMS last Friday. Uh, we, we actually did uh, executed three landmark decisions on, on, on that event. Uh, one was approval to change the company's name. So MNC Digital is the new company name. Uh, you see the new logo in front of you, and there'll be a lot of promotion and, and branding, rebranding exercises going on. The second part of the EGMS was to approve the change of the company's management. Uh, to strengthen the business, to strengthen core activities, and to lead the business into the digital future in the next 10 years. Uh, and the third part was to actually acquire a few other businesses uh, from other companies in the group. And I'll talk about those as well on this slide. If I can just focus your attention on the left part, so the content and IP 
the production houses, the IP and distribution management and production infrastructure. These have been bread and butter businesses of MSIN or MNC Digital since the beginning. The yellow tab, uh, talent and label. So talent management, we have 400 artists that we manage. I think, you know, a lot of household names actually were born in MNC Studios or MNC Group. Uh, we have star hits with massive numbers uh, of viewership in social media, uh, with massive number of fans in social media. We also manage uh, various uh, talent on social media as well. So we are an MCN, a multi-channel network. So we actually manage talent that's on social media. We have fantastic uh, record labels on the music and publishing side as well. These are all traditional parts of the business which already exist. The third part, which is the gaming and esports, is, an, is a venture that we uh, began in 2019 as we have how we were host for the first Piala president. Uh, this is basically taking esports into the professional gaming uh, scene where we had talent shows, uh, we had competitions, and we do various parts in esports now in terms of game development and publishing, in terms of team management. So anyone playing at home, you know, I used to be a gamer and I never, I never had the opportunity to be a professional gamer and earn money. But in today's, you know, in, in the 20th century, I think anybody at home, if you have some time, practice and you can eventually start earning money by playing games, which is fantastic. Uh, and of course, we aggregate games as well. Now, a little bit on the, on the uh, focus on the right side, which is the, the turquoise or the light blue uh, side. Now, this is the, the new part of MNC Digital or the acquisitions that we've actually made uh, as approved by the EJMS last Friday. And this is very significant because the last three pillars are largely focused on content, whether it's video content or audio content, or et cetera. Uh, it's all content focused or talent focused. But the blue vertical is about the digital platforms. So it's not just about content, it's also about digital platforms. And I'll, and I'll tell you why we're doing this. Uh, we've actually added RCTI Plus, which is uh, the, the largest AWARD super app in Indonesia into the business. Uh, we've actually acquired uh, Vision Plus from a sister company from IPTV uh, into the business as well. So this is a premium SWOT or subscription-based uh, app where you can watch premium content. We've actually added the general and news portals. So six of them, household names like OKZone, OK Sindo News, uh, which is the digital version of the, of, the, of the paper, the newspaper, the Quran. We've got inews.id uh, and three new ones. So IDX channel, celebrities ID and, and sports stars ID. And the last one was an AI-based uh, portal called Badiku. And I'll go through each one of these in a little bit more detail uh, as we go through the slides. Okay, a little bit about our performance, uh, which is, you know, I think uh, I shouldn't blow the trumpet too much, but we're number one in four different categories already. Uh, being a household name, we dominate the space in dramas. We've been number one in dramas for a long time. Uh, we've been breaking national records, 37% nationwide market share, 2000, almost 3,000 hours of content. Reality programs, we are almost 50% of the nationwide market share uh, with 784 hours of content. So massive content production engines that are churning out stories, stories to entertain the nation, uh, to, you know, when, when your spirits are low, to, to uplift your spirits, uh, considering what's happening around the world. A lot of information as well. So infotainment, we're 31% of the market share with 1,500 hours annually. Uh, animations, so this is content that is not only for Indonesia, our animations also travel globally. Uh, so we have about 56% of nationwide market share and we're also positioning this as a, as a global play. So the, the good thing about animations is you can dub it and you, know, you can actually repurpose it for many other countries. I think we've already reached about 63 or 64 countries today in terms of our animation content. Uh, we have a growing portfolio of movies. We produce about 10 to 12 movies per year. That's, an, that's, a, that's a growing portfolio. So something that we've not entered, uh, recently entered, but not pushed that hard. Uh, of course, with cinemas and all closed as well in the last few years during the pandemic, then you know, it's a slightly different uh, strategy for movies. Uh, and originals is an area that we're increasingly growing. So I think for those of us that watch uh, a lot of the other OTT or, or uh, apps like uh, Netflix and Disney, uh, you'll notice there's a lot of investment and a lot of storytelling in short form dramas in the, in the form of originals. And that's an area that we are actually producing and growing very quickly. We think that's an area that we'll continue to invest in. How do we distribute all this content? So how all this content that's produced, how do we distribute it? You'll see the three main platforms at the bottom. So we've got the free to air, which is the four free to air businesses, the, the group owns uh, and the pay TV businesses. 
We have apps, webs, and OTT. So these are all the digital side of the businesses that we own. And then there's third parties uh, like YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok, which is the social media side platforms that we don't own, but we put our content, we repurpose our content, uh, we capture the viewers' eyes, and then we try and bring those viewers onto our platform, which is, which is something that uh, is, is very commonly uh, done in, in many of the uh, digital ambitions globally. Next. Uh, just to give you some, some indication of uh, the performance. So this is basically uh, groundbreaking. If you look at the 2021 uh, performance in terms of top 20 programs, effectively RCTI uh, or the channel that we supply most of our content to, the free to add channel, dominates across so many titles, uh, where, whether it's from drama, whether it's from talent search, whether it's animation, infotainment, uh, even news, uh, our online blocking, we, we are dominating the, the uh, industry numbers. Uh, the share, the audience share for Ikatan Chinta, for example, has been averaging over 40% for more than six months. This has also been uh, uh, acknowledged by Muri as an Indonesian world record. Uh, and I think we continue to dominate some of these spaces uh, in 2022 as well. Uh, just if I can highlight a few of the, of, the, of the numbers here. If you look at Ikatan Chinta, Amana Wali, Preman Pension, the TVR, and the audience share. So the audience share is basically how many audience we reach and TVR is how many actually tune into that at that moment in time. Uh, it far outweighs the, the performance of almost any other station in the nation. Uh, if you look at online blocking, so this might be something quite new, so I'll explain that. So online blocking is where we have certain uh, periods of time during prime hours usually, uh, which drive about 60% of the revenue of any free to air business. Uh, it's usually the, the, the prime hours. And we have events with large e-commerce players like Lazada, Shopee, et cetera, where they're actually running programs or commissioning TV programs to, to soft sell or promote some of their products and their, and their services. Uh, and this is something that we, we dominate as well. Uh, we also run a lot of awards. So these are awards that uh, we host on our channels or also awards that we run ourselves. And of course, production for this is also revenue for us as a business. Next. Uh, to give you some, some light into what we, are, we do in the IP and licensing side of things. So we obviously, because we produce, we own the IP. So the, the intellectual property, right? That's what, that's what we're talking about here. So when we own the IP, we can monetize that IP. So for example, there's a lot of uh, uh, FMCG brands that want to exploit the affinity of the user with these brands. You know, if you watch a, an actress or an actor that you like and you can relate to, and they are eating a pack of noodles or they're driving a particular car, then those brands want to also leverage that. So we license our IP to those brands to use uh, the names. So for example, Ikatan Chinta, Putrianto Pangeran, Kiko, the animation, or Bima. We license all of this out uh, for production, for promotion, for on-site events, uh, and also for, for uh, merchandise as well. So some of these characters go into merchandising, especially the animation side. We do that. Uh, a new part uh, of the business is uh, NFT. So I think that's been a hot topic in the industry for quite some time. And with such a large content library, so we have over 300,000 hours of content. Uh, and this content basically lends itself to, to NFT monetization uh, in terms of how we can repurpose them, how we can uh, position them into uh, exchanges and how we can actually exploit the celebrities and the talents that we have as a business. Uh, and also the content character. So I think this is something that's upcoming. Uh, watch, watch out for this space. So it's a, it's a very fairly new area, uh, but I think that will then take us to another whole level of uh, how we actually are able to monetize the archives and the content that we continue to create. Next. Uh, a little bit about our, pro about our production capabilities. So since we are you know, largely a content business, uh, if you look at the dominance in terms of production and all the various stages, we've been an in-house uh, uh, production company for a long time already, for more than 15 years. Uh, we continue to dominate in in-studio production. But one of the lessons that we've learned from the pandemic is as you start going into outdoor production and you know, with restrictions of movement, uh, with the licensing required, with various issues that you need to go through the full production life cycle, uh, we've decided to invest in Movieland uh, as, a, as an integrated one-stop studio uh, what it also allows us to do is not just produce content that we want to produce, but also support the to become a creative economical hub in MNC Lido City, which is just the south of Jakarta towards Bogor. It is planned to be the largest uh, in Southeast Asia. It will be integrated with a lot of facilities 
And it's basically made for local and foreign players as well. So we're talking high-end production capabilities. Uh, you wouldn't have to you know, uh, spend a lot of time and, and inefficiencies in acquiring licenses because we're actually building infrastructure to this. You can see some of the photographs of the, uh, of the houses or the landmarks that we're building there. So you could shoot various scenes in there. Uh, you could do indoors, you could do facades. Uh, it's, a, it's, a mini, it's a mini Hollywood, basically, uh, in, in Lido City. And it's a large area, so 21 hectares. Uh, it will just bring a lot of, uh, if you understand the production uh, life cycle, there's a lot of inefficiencies in time. Moving crew, setting up the crew. Uh, if it rains, you've got to move things in, then you've got to bring them out. And all of this will be mitigated or at least severely reduced. Uh, allowing more efficiencies uh, in the creative economy. And I think this is also open uh, you know, to, to all the producers and all the other smaller houses as well to be used so that you know, we could also lease it out uh, for, for other companies to use. It will take you through pre-production, production and post-production. So there'll be also technology involved. There'll be good connectivity in there. Uh, I think there are other parts of the business that we're looking at building data centers so that you don't have to you know, bring a lot of data storage capacity to support the creative ecosystem. So you could do all of this in one site. So one-stop shop uh, for, for ourselves uh, and for the nation as well. Next. Uh, let, me let me talk a little bit about our talent management. So one of the key areas in production is getting the right talent to do the right thing at the right cost uh, and at the right time. And MNC Digital has the biggest talent management in the country with 400 plus artists. As I mentioned earlier, we also manage uh, on, on YouTube, the multi-channel networks, we also manage about 144 artists. Uh, so we actually help them manage their content, help them position themselves on all of these social media platforms. Uh, all of our talent are in a contract for effectively 10 years. So as we take them through the journey of, uh, you know, take an example, you come onto one of our programs, let's say Indonesia Idol or, or Indonesia X Factor, uh, and you become a rising star, we'll take you through the full journey through the group. And I think we're one of the few groups in the nation or even in the region that can actually do this from A to Z, right? So this is from finding you, training you, bringing you onto our, our businesses, business areas, bringing you onto our programs, grooming you, elevating you, managing your content. There's a huge amount of workforce and, and energy spent. Uh, and we do all of that as part of our talent management uh, and talent search programs as well. Uh, we, we have a revenue split, so obviously... Uh, we also ensure that the talent is uh, well compensated uh, and, you know, they, are, they have a career path within the organization. And I think a lot of household names, if you look at the names on the, on the highlight talents, like Ayu Ting Ting, Marian Jola, Tiara, Anmesh, these are all household names under our portfolio. And we look to increase them. You know, I think there's a lot of talent shows even in 2022 going on. Uh, so I think the idea is to increase this, which then also allows us to then continue our dominance in the production and the creativity space. We're also moving into uh, music labels. So that's another thing I'll talk about a bit later, uh, some of our plans in, in the music stream. Uh, we obviously have, with all the uh, talent shows like Indonesia Idol, uh, X Factor, The Voice, I think it positions us as a creator of music uh, content as well. And that's an area that I'll talk about slightly later in the other slides. Uh, a little bit about our performance in social media. So if you look at our, our numbers, I think it speaks for itself. We've roughly got close to 4% of YouTube viewership. That's 52 billion views. If you look at all MNC group content, we've got 166 million subs. Uh, and with star hits and the MNC and talent that we have, it's 11.4 additional billion views and 84 million subs, 88.8 uh, .8 million subs. So it's a fantastic number. You know, we're able to generate huge amounts of uh, viewership. Obviously, we monetize this viewership as well. So there is revenue share models uh, with, with the social media platforms like YouTube. Uh, we operate the multi-channel network. We allow third-party content creators to come on board as well and help them monetize and come into our ecosystem. Uh, our content library is massive. Uh, we repurpose a lot of this content and we position it and we continue to do so depending on the, on the popularity of the third-party platforms coming. I think we know uh, that, that you know, every few years you'll get a new platform like TikTok. You know, TikTok wasn't that, from, uh, you know, that famous and today it's one of the dominating forces. And what we do is ensure that we have the talent, we have the content and the ability to ride on these platforms very quickly, uh, monetize if we can, or if we can't monetize, use them as an acquisition channel to bring eyeballs onto our own platforms. Uh, if, you look at the, uh, if you look at the numbers on TikTok, so very, very fast from 139 TikTok accounts, 
we already have about 230 million followers. Uh, so there's a, there's a whole funnel where, you know, you get followers, they understand your content, they understand your brand, they relate to it, and then we bring them into our ecosystem onto our own digital platforms. Next. Here's an example of one of our digital platforms. So RCTI Plus, uh, the largest uh, AVOD super app in the country. Uh, let, me, let me describe a little bit the different components of RCTI Plus. Uh, it's got four components currently, largely starting with video. So you can watch streaming video, live TV. If you miss something at home or you're traveling, you can catch up as well uh, on your phones or on your handsets. Uh, it's got all the, the, the four FTA channels uh, that we own, uh, that the group own. We've got huge libraries, we've got extended content, and we've got a lot of unaired content as well. So if you understand the, the production business, not everything makes it to the 24 hours on air. So content that doesn't make it on air, we are also able to then put it onto apps uh, and give our audience a little bit more uh, entertainment or supplementary or complementary entertainment uh, content. RCTI Plus also uh, has quizzes. Uh, it's got original shots, mids, and long-form content. You can participate in, in competitions. Uh, and what it does is largely capitalize on the group audience share uh, in, a digital, in a digital platform. The next part is news. So if you look at how people consume content, you may not want to watch video all the time. You know, people work, people go to school, people have to travel. We do a lot of things in our daily routines. Uh, but you always want to be informed. You always want to know whether there's been another earthquake in the south of, uh, of Java. Is that affecting Jakarta, for example, if you're living here? And we take these key information, we put it in the app. So you get also news from our portals. We also aggregate news from other publishers uh, and we generate a lot of news articles as well, which then make itself into the RCTI Plus app. So you have one app to now not just entertain yourself from video, but also watch, you know, get news, so get informed by news, read news. Uh, we have audio as well. So why do we have audio? Because sometimes you can't look at the screen. You know, I, I, I'm quite an active uh, person myself. A lot of my team are active. When you're running, when you're working out, you can't be watching, you need, but you could listen to something. And we give you a full choice of audio entertainment content. So we, we aggregate content. We've got radio channels. We've got audio series. We've got podcasts, uh, domestic and international radio channels. And we also continue to invest in the audio side, uh, which, which is an investment into a, a leading uh, or, an, or leading a, a growing uh, audio platform called Treble. Uh, if you notice Treble on the right, so Treble is basically a music uh, download and streaming service. So you just you stream it, you stream it to download once, and then you keep it on your phone. Uh, and this will be uh, available on RCTI Plus very quickly. So what this brings is the ability for you to use RCTI Plus to download music now and listen to it as well. So you don't need a continuous online uh, connection. Uh, the fourth point, which is the UGC. So this is something where we actually uh, acquire digital talent or acquire talent digitally. So for example, if we are recruiting for a show or if we are trying to source talent for a show, then we'll run a competition on Hot Plus. Uh, and what it does is it effectively allows you wherever you are in Indonesia or even globally to submit yourself doing something, right? Acting or singing. Uh, and then we'll bring you into our ecosystem without you having to come into our studios in Kebun Sire uh, or Kebun Jeruk, uh, largely Kebun Jeruk basically, uh, to come in and, and audition, right? So it's kind of like a digital audition platform as well. Next. Uh, Vision Plus. So this is our uh, premium SWOD platform. Uh, we've got roughly close to 8 million registered users now, 45 million monthly active users. What is Vision Plus? For those of you who don't know, it's effectively TV anytime, TV anywhere from a premium perspective. So it offers you, uh, by, by paying a monthly fee, it effectively gives you all the channels uh, that you subscribe on MNC Vision, K-Vision, or MNC Play. These are our pay TV platforms. Uh, and it also gives you the largest variety of free-to-air content. So we actually put all of our free-to-air channels and we have partnerships with the largest number of free-to-air channels in Indonesia. I think we're the only ones who are able to offer that. Uh, and some of them are exclusive on our platform. And we also allow uh, other companies uh, or other content providers to work with us. So we can also use this as a platform to leverage other uh, content coming onto our platform through, through various revenue share models. Uh, what, we, what we are also doing with Vision Plus, so this is something uh, that's changing, is we are also transforming Vision Plus uh, into a super app. And what do I mean by that? 
is if you look at most OTT premium services, it's largely video. And when you're largely video, the user comes maybe during free hours or during longer hours, right? You have to be at home, you know, or, or somewhere not at home, but you need about 20 to 30 minutes to watch something on video, especially if it's premium content because of the, because of the uh, timing of the content, right? Even the shortest originals is usually 45 minutes to an hour uh, if, you're, if you're watching it. But what do you do when you're not watching it? So how do we bring you back? And one of the strategies that we've decided to embark on, you know, looking at examples overseas and, and globally is offer more premium content that lends itself to a subscription basis. So this would be adding categories like games. So for example, now if you open the Vision Plus game today, uh, app today, you can actually play subscription-based games uh, where as part of your fee, you get to play, I think it's roughly 74 games on the app uh, and you can play those games for free. They're actually part of your, part of your subscription. Uh, and these are games that basically uh, allow us to continue developing a, a, a connection with, the, with our customers, to engage with them digitally, and also to entertain them. And these are also games that we will start uh, innovating in the sense that we're going to probably be run launching digital competitions. And if they really gain traction, we'll probably go with uh, you know, offline competitions as well once the, once the pandemic eases up, et cetera. Uh, and these are casual games, right? So these are not serious games. These are games during a lunch break, uh, or, you know, during, if you're traveling and sitting down in the car or the MRT and you want to play a short game, these are those kind of games. These are not games that you would play, you know, for two, three hours uh, professionally or in a go. That's another side. It's another side of our strategy. We've also uh, added ClockClick, which is largely UGC content. Uh, it's an all-in-one media uh, app offering five different things. So effectively web series, short, shorter content that you can play from various genres, uh, audio stories. Uh, or audio series where you know someone's reading something or, or, or reciting something. Uh, it's got stories, so we've licensed a lot of comics as well, and you can read those comics. Uh, and we've got Circle as well. So if you want to relate to certain artists, or if you're a fan of a particular artist and you want to get in touch with them, or they're hosting a quick show, or they're doing a small a promo, then you can engage with them through the ClockClick app as well. Next. Okay, uh, this is something that I'd like to spend a little bit more time on. So if you look at some of the reasoning of why we have actually brought digital platforms like RCTI Plus, Vision Plus uh, into MNC Digital, it's because uh, for those of us who have been following global markets, a lot of the strength of content now lies with the marriage of platforms. And this has been a phenomenon that's been increasingly uh, 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 rolling out globally. So, you know, big content players, I'm talking players like Disney, uh, HBO, they've started to launch their own digital apps. And through their digital apps, they've been launching all of their popular content uh, as almost a first view. So if you want to watch something popular, you have to download their app. And that link, or I would say, is that that ikatan cinta between the uh, content and the platform is something that's growing globally. Uh, and this is something that we have seen, we have also uh, decided to embark on ourselves. So now a lot of the RCTI plus uh, RCTI content is exclusively available uh, on our platform simultaneously, whether it's on RCTI plus or vision plus. Uh, and this is something that you would continue seeing as, as we roll out uh, new exciting uh, content into the market. So we, we would like to position our platforms as the first bite. Uh, of content, of course, outside music. So once cinema, uh, sorry, outside movies. So once cinema is open, then movies usually go into the cinema window, but we're not precluding that from even launching some of these movies on our own platforms because our reach in these platforms are massive. Uh, and as we want to strengthen that reach, we want to strengthen that affinity with our platforms, we would increasingly be doing this. I think uh, the, the slides speak for itself in terms of the uh, content. If you look at the awards, if you look at the shows, uh, the four free to add channels that are, that are exclusive, RCTI, MNC TV, GTV, and iNews. Uh, if you combine them, you're looking at a 52% average prime time audience share in 2021, which is just you know, record breaking. And 20 of the 20 top programs as well. So what this allows us is a massive opportunity for upselling, advertising, bundling, uh, and almost, you know, I, I don't like to use the word 360 sales, but what it allows us to do is monetize eyeballs across various platforms within the group using our content. Next. Okay, uh, some penetration strategies. So how are we actually increasing our digital reach? Uh, obviously a lot of our digital apps are promoted in our free to add channels. So that's one, 
But apart from that, apart from our own assets and apart from cross-promotion within the group, we have various penetration strategies to expedite subscription growth, right? So we want more eyeballs. We want more people to come onto our platforms. Uh, from, a, from a DTH or from, from our satellite business, pay TV business and, and IPTV businesses, we have about 10 million subscribers uh, as of January 2022 from MNC Vision, K Vision and MNC Play. And we're increasingly trying to convert these subscribers to adopt our digital platforms. So this would be RCTI Plus and, and Vision Plus uh, largely, of course, come onto our portals if they're not onto our portals and use some of our uh, apps like BuddyQ as well if they want to create content and, and be a contributor, which is something quite unique. Apart from that, we've got various strategic collaborations with the telcos, uh, one with Telcom Indonesia, which we announced, uh, Indie Home, the largest broadband provider with 9 million subscribers. Uh, we do various uh, initiatives with them. It could be bundling of the content. It could be cross-carriage of our applications. Uh, it could be pre-downloads. There are various business models that we use to, to grow our subscriber base. The third one is Migo, which we, we actually announced an investment uh, in Q3 last year. Uh, Migo is basically a last mile distribution platform. Uh, in, in summary, what does it allow us to do? Basically, it's cheap. You don't need the internet. There are no ads. There's no buffering. And how do they do this? It's through Waro Migos. So wherever you are in Indonesia, as long as there's a Waro Migo, you'll see a sign. You can go there, download the Migo app, and using a Wi-Fi connection. So you don't have to use your, your telco 3G or 4G connection. You don't have to subscribe to anything. Using the Wi-Fi connection in your phone, you can download content and you can consume the content offline. Uh, and the payments are very small, right? So the, it's a very small, uh, you know, 1,000 rupiahs for a couple of days, uh, 2,000 rupiahs, that sort of monetary uh, monetization strategy. And Migo is targeting about 100,000 locations across Indonesia. So what this will allow you to do is also reach people outside the main city. So the main eight cities where, you know, broadband is fantastic. Uh, telco connections are very good, but... Data rates are still expensive. So Indonesia is still expensive in terms of data rates. It's not unlimited. Uh, even if it's unlimited, you know, there are connectivity uh, issues if, as you start moving across the main eight cities. And what this allows is for users at the lower level of income or the, or, or the mid to lower level of income to access our content and consume it on a more frequent, more regular basis without incurring those uh, data costs and of course we work with all the telcos so you know we have major mobile operator partners from smart friend to telcom cell exa Xiata, and these are the telco partnerships that i that i mentioned earlier whether it's brand bundling or zero rating or it's part of a package where your data is not actually uh, costed out to the user next uh, online portals so i think these some of these are already household names i'll not spend too much time talking about these but in 2021 we launched three more we launched, uh, apart from OKZone, Sindhu News, and iNews, we launched the IDX channel. So this is focused for those who are interested in the financial markets, the capital markets, stock trading. Uh, I think Indonesia is uh, uh, already seeing about 7 million uh, uh, traders in the market today. So that's a massive number of people onboarding the youth and the youngsters to come onto the stock market and invest and understand how the stock market works. Uh, all of this, this is the official partnership with IDX. So we actually manage the channel. We manage the, uh, the portal for them. Celebrities and sports stars, very obvious. So, you know, we have a huge talent pool. We want to bring that talent pool uh, onto a portal. So you can also, you know, see gossip. You can look at photographs. So you can engage with them beyond the TV screen and sports, of course, right? So Indonesia has done really well in the last Olympics. I think sports is becoming a, a much bigger uh, entertainment form in Indonesia. Uh, we also carry a lot of sporting content in various channels. We're producing a lot more and we want to build that affinity with the user outside TV and outside just video. So the portals also give you information, uh, far, you know, latest news, sports results, sports coverage, and broader, deeper uh, information for those who are, you know, interested in, in understanding those sporting verticals. Total traffic altogether is roughly 18 million uh, uh, MAUs for the six portals, which is once again, a huge number. Uh, on the right, you'll see a new platform that we launched just last December called BuddyKu. It comes to, it's basically a content ecosystem platform. Uh, how is it different from a portal? Number one, it's AI driven. Uh, so we calculate or, or we compute uh, the user's interest and will serve you what you want to consume. Uh, it also allows personalization. So, you know, depending on what you're consuming, depending on what your interests are, we will curate content, produce more content from our own ecosystems and present it to you. 
But what it also does is allow you to contribute or allow any user to contribute content back to us. So there's a contribution side to this now. Uh, I think Indonesian uh, consumers are now very, very prolific contributors of, uh, of content into platforms like TikTok, for example. They're very good at taking their phone. The phones are very good. You know, they all got good cameras. They got good microphones. And they're able to now produce uh, audiovisual content very easily. And we'd like that to also come through our ecosystem now. So BuddyQ actually allows users to contribute content, whether it's articles or videos. Uh, apart from contributing, as we take that content and put it back into the app for others to consume, we also allow the users to monetize. So for example, if you don't have a large following on any one of the social media platforms, you, know, you don't have 100,000 users in YouTube or you know, 50,000 users in TikTok, you can't really make money. But if you think your content is good enough, please download BuddyKu, make some contributions. And you know, if we think the content is good, uh, we have a huge you know, automated and manual process. And if it, if it, if it suits our, our editorial criteria, we will feature your content in our app. And there's a revenue share model as well. So you could actually make money uh, by contributing that content. And I think this is a strategy that we will be building much stronger going forward because I think the creative economy is something that's still largely undertapped in Indonesia. And we would like to be in the forefront of doing that. Next. <clears throat> so I mentioned casual games earlier. Uh, this is a dedicated gaming arm, which we actually have called Esports Star Indonesia. And what do I mean by this? So this is actually a, a business now solely focused on game development and publishing, uh, professional uh, running and, and hosting professional esports competitions, esports talent search, esports team management as well. So once you get the talent, how do you manage the team? How do you take them globally? How do you make them global champions, etc.? cetera? Uh, and also uh, uh, the games aggregator part of the business. To give you some history and why we've gone into it. So esports production and broadcasting, we've been involved since, since uh, 2019. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we were the first to run the Piala President or host the Piala President. Uh, and as we worked with big gaming brands like Garena and Montoon, uh, we actually hosted their leagues. So they have leagues at different levels. They have kind of uh, national level, regional level, global level leagues and competitions. Uh, we, we got a lot of experience from running these, uh, which also gave us a lot of insights into how do you actually manage these teams, right? How do you not just produce and, and, and tie on and show on, on TV? But how do you actually work with these uh, new new uh, talents? How do you actually manage them? And it's still largely greenfield. You know, it's not it's not uh, it's only growing. The the esports market is huge, uh, and we've actually got a dedicated TV channel called GTV for domestic uh, audience for for games. Uh, and, and on the digital front, we've got RCTI Plus and 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 Vision Plus as well as digital platforms for this. Now, what are we doing? Is uh, <clears throat> I think you might have seen uh, for those of you who follow us. Uh, announcements on two games that were set to launch. So we're actually developing our own game. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of going through the last stages of testing called Rapid Fire, which is set to launch in, uh, in uh, the first half, uh, the first semester of uh, 2022. And further on, we'll launch another game called Battle of Legends. So Rapid Fire is basically a first-person shooter game. Uh, basically, it's yourself. You're, you're carrying a weapon and you're running around and you're, and you're achieving certain tasks. Uh, <clears throat> and Battle of Legends is more a team a team playing game so we're, they're two different games these are professional games uh, obviously launching the game is just the, the the start from launching the game you know we will exploit the the large network and the large reach that we have of gamers uh, we will be producing competitions and we will take we will increase the affinity to our games by bringing these talent pools uh, you know wherever they are in indonesia at least on a local level and then start trying to get them into the international arenas as well so I think this is a very exciting area for the business. Uh, still large growth. I think you know, gaming hours have only increased in the last few years and continue to increase. And as you give gamers a career path or, or a path to actually earn money and become a star or become a superstar, then that kind of makes them a gaming celebrity as well. So it's definitely an area that we can, you know, we can look forward to seeing a lot more from the group. Next. Okay, so this is the uh, last slide to talk a little bit about our revenues. Uh, this is pre-consolidation. If you look at the actuals for 2021, uh, our revenues largely come from content and IP and talent. And within that content is of, of course the largest uh, revenue contributor as we create, produce and sell that content to the four free to air channels and also third parties as well. So we also sell our content to uh, overseas businesses, uh, you know, Malaysia our, uh, uh, and other countries. We also sell it to other platforms globally. We sell it to Netflix, for example, uh, and we continue to do that. 
the, uh, our, our, as I mentioned, uh, if you look at our growth between 2021 and, and the performer numbers, so not much in terms of content and IP, uh, but what I'd like to highlight is the digital advertisement side. So post-consolidation, as we just finished the EGMS uh, last Friday, uh, there will be a significant up in terms of revenue because the acquiring businesses and those businesses then form part of uh, MNC Digital or MSI and or now MNC Digital. Uh, this would be largely the digital advertising side. Uh, why have we acquired that? To give you some background, it's because we see users also now transitioning from uh, free to air into digital platforms. So especially the younger audiences. Uh, and we want to capture that and we want to keep them on those platforms. So digital advertisement is largely RCTI plus uh, our social media platforms. Uh, Non-digital advertisement uh, is digital uh, revenue coming from things like overlays on the screen. Uh, and subscription is basically Vision Plus. So we've also acquired Vision Plus, which is the, the subscription uh, app from IPTV. And that's revenue contribution from uh, Vision Plus for the performer. Uh, if you look at the numbers, uh, significant, significant raise uh, from, from 2021 through, through the acquisition. Uh, and our EBITDA margins are still healthy, a slight reduction because the portal businesses are not as healthy in terms of margin uh, as, the, as the video businesses. But if you look at the, the net profit numbers, if you look at income, it continues to be very strong. Uh, I think we're, we're, we're still holding back on announcing our, our December numbers, but I would say very good, very good performance to be expected. And 2022, I think we'll seriously leverage uh, all the assets that we've acquired here as part of this consolidation. Uh, and you know, look at almost doubling our our performance in in 2021. So that's that's something that you know we're happy to share some color on as well. I think that that brings me to the to the last slide of the presentation. Uh, happy to happy to take questions. Uh, happy to clarify, etc. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Omar Girivaliapan, for the comprehensive presentations. We will now begin the Q&A sessions. If you have any questions, participants can just type it on the chat box to me as the moderator, and I will read it to Mr. Omar. When typing your questions in chat box, please clearly state your name and your company, or you can also use raise hand feature. Well, Pa Omar, before I open the floor to the participants, congrats Pa for the MSIN rebranding to become the largest and most integrated digital content and entertainment group in Indonesia. And congrats for the good set of numbers. Is it possible, Pa, to disclose your guidance and target numbers so we can better see the outlook uh, for 2022 onwards, maybe from the top line, bottom line, or EBITDA margin? Any updates over there would be great, Pa. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so as I, as I mentioned, um, post-consolidation, uh, we should see at least a doubling in terms of top line, uh, uh, if, not, if not more. Uh, I think that because there's already revenue coming in uh, from these assets that we've acquired. Uh, in terms of cost structures, uh, largely cost in terms of investments. So there's some cost there as we build our outdoor studios. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be amortized across a few years, so we don't build it at one go, right? So we actually uh, uh, spread the cost across a few years as well. Uh, in terms of EBITDA margins, in terms of uh, net income, definitely an increase. Uh, I think, you know, the, the uh, video side or the content production side has got large rooms to grow. The advertising side has a, has a huge amount of growth potential as well. Uh, I think the only, the only area that would probably remain a little bit uh, single-digit growth would be things like the portals, right? So I think everybody knows uh, the portal businesses uh, because you're largely doing display ads and the dynamic of display ads and digital ads. It's not as easy to monetize. The CPM numbers are not growing as fast, uh, but video CPM numbers are growing. So you know, we see huge, huge potential on the, on the video side or content that is video based. Uh, I think gaming as well. Uh, we have not even started monetizing gaming. Uh, so largely 2022 will be the the trial to monetize gaming 2023 would be where it would really start being monetized and those numbers will be reflected there. So I think gaming is very exciting for us because uh, once you get a game that's popular with the, with the players or with the, with the nation, then revenue numbers just rocket up, right? So it's not kind of linear growth. It tends to be logarithmic growth. So, you know, we're very excited to launch the game. Uh, and I think that will, that needs to be kind of seen, you know, we, we, we're looking to see how the, the market reacts to it. Uh, we're very excited to launch the game. So we think numbers from gaming would definitely give you a, a leapfrog. 
and gaming costs don't follow as well, right? So the, so the benefit of a, of, a, of a game is once you create it and once it gets popular, your costs don't really increase in line uh, logarithmically. So that, that's a good margin in terms of bottom line or EBITDA if the game or, or when the game flies. Okay, thank you, sir. So um, management believes that in terms of revenue, uh, could reach a double digit number and EBITDA will be increased as well. Okay, thank you for the additional detail. There were a couple of questions that already coming from the chat box, Mr. Omar. Your first questions coming from Ms. Rusita Octaviana regarding the investment in treble music. Could you give us a more latest update regarding the strategic cooperation with Treble Music? And how big is the benefit that has already been booked from the strategic partnership? Go ahead, Pat. Thank you. Yeah, very good question. Um, so if you look at the, uh, let, let me start by the why first, right? So the why question is important. As I, as I mentioned earlier, um, as you consume On a, imagine a user that wakes up in the morning and sleeps at night. All of us are, we are all that user, right? What do we do throughout our day? And how many touch points with MNC digital assets do you have during the day? Was a question that our operational units asked themselves. How do we get users to come onto our platforms? And even if you look at, you know, the largest players in the world, and I'm talking, you know, Google, for example, YouTube for video, YouTube's now got music. Uh, YouTube's also got, you know, movies, you know, they're all moving down this road because they want stickiness. And that's exactly what we want, right? So we want the user to use our app. It's a super app. Use it as many times as you can during the day. Why Treble? Because Treble's a growing platform. They've had tremendous uh, success in markets like Mexico, where internet penetration or, or data rates are expensive. And for Indonesia, we see similar dynamics with those markets where people don't want to continuously stream content. They want to download and consume because streaming has two issues, right? One is the cost of data. And the second one is connectivity because even if you have unlimited data, if your connection is not good, it takes a lot of time to stream. Now with Travel, the investment is still early. We just announced it. Uh, the technical work is, in, is, is ongoing. We should see integration into the app by uh, an April timeframe. Uh, and what this will allow you to do is effectively download content uh, and consume it. And this is music content, which we never had. So, so MNC has never really had download to go music content from that perspective. So now you'll be listening to content offline. Uh, what it also does is it also gives us more MAUs and users and subscribers for RCTI Plus and, and, and uh, Vision Plus because that increases the number of people uh, that we can then, from a music interest, move them into other areas of our content, right? So we can upsell. If you're interested in a particular kind of music, then you might want to watch a music clip. You might want to watch a video. You might want to read some news. And that ecosystem of consumption is what makes RCTI Plus a super app uh, as big as it is. Uh, in terms of Treble, so wait, wait for Treble's official launch. As I said, I think uh, that we're looking at uh, somewhere between Uh, April to May timeframe. Uh, and that would then give a total new vertical into uh, the uh, MNC digital portfolio. And of course, look forward to, you know, we, 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 do, we do want to boost the whole music industry as well. We still think there's a lot of play in the music industry, uh, not just from an awards perspective, but from a ranking, from a talent, from a monetization perspective. We are heavily investing in that. And that's one of the reasons why we also brought a platform. So instead of building our own, we decided to partner with, a, with a, I would say, the, the, the next coming Spotify uh, in, in regions like uh, uh, Indonesia and other, other markets where internet connection and download rates are expensive. Okay, thanks for the color there, Pa. Uh, we can take one last question before the end of the sessions. Well, from the floor, we see Mr. Ryan Rogar has raised his hand. Mr. Ryan from Escaton Fun, please go ahead. You can uh, unmute yourself. Yeah. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, Ryan. Hi. Great. Thanks. Thanks for taking my question. And nice to hear from you guys again. So I, the first thing I was wondering was um, in, in reviewing uh, some of the details around the transaction here, it looks like IPTV will not be taking an equity stake in uh, MNC Digital. Is that correct? It's it's basically just a pure swap of Vision Plus for the permissory notes. Uh, Ryan, we we can't disclose that because it's still being confirmed, right? Uh, okay. So the acquisition, gotcha. yes, and we you know uh, as an investor into us, happy to take a private call on that. It's still being finalized. So the EGM is just uh, finished on Friday. 
and there'll be another one uh, happening in a in, in couple of months' time. So unfortunately, gotcha. unfortunately, can't, can't answer that at this point in time. It's still no, no problem. Yeah. No problem. The, the other thing I wanted to ask about is, so, uh, you know, um, the, the, the stock, you know, there's a limited float, but it's, it's run up pretty substantially here. I mean, you're, you know, on my screen, you're looking at, you know, just over a $4.5 billion valuation. And so I'm wondering if you guys are seeking to raise equity here, or increase the float, is, is that kind of the valuation at now at which you sort of expect to be issuing equity or, or how does that affect your plans? And then ultimately sort of what percentage are you looking to increase the float at this point? Can you give any kind of color on those kind of details? Uh, exact numbers we can't, but the, the yeah. aim is definitely to increase the float. So that's for sure, right? Uh, uh, you know, we're a public listed entity. There are minimum numbers. Uh, but in terms of valuation, so we, we were always under the... Uh, uh, you know, we always had the view that MSIN was undervalued uh, because it was always hiding under MNCN from a, from a structure perspective, right? So for those who understand yeah. the structure, MSIN is largely owned by MNCN, which is our free-to-air business. Uh, I think unlocking that value has reflected in the in the share price increase. Uh, I think more and more investors are also understanding, you know, the value of content and the power of content. Uh, I think this is also driven by by the global phenomenon of content owners holding their content for themselves on their own platforms. So now yeah. the so now the dollar is on the on the production capability, right? Can you produce enough? Uh, as you know, you know we've we've shared quite a few times. We we get a lot of requests for local content uh, because monetizing the Indonesian audience without local content is 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 hard. Uh, the the affinities, the storytelling is a big part of this uh, of this business. We we see the valuation. You know, uh, we I, I we personally think it should be actually higher compared to to benchmarks around the region and and global benchmarks. Uh, float, yes. In terms of raising uh, funds, yes. I think we, we have disclosed that we are on a, on a fundraising. You know, we are looking at a placement. Uh, and post-placement, of course, there will be more liquidity uh, in the market as well. Okay. All right. Great. Well, that's helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Ren. Okay. Thank you. Uh, since the time is almost up, last but not least, Mr. Omar Kirifaliapan, can you give us a closing remarks to conclude today's session, please, sir? Thank you, uh, Vinny. Yeah, I think, you know, just, just to summarize a little bit, the, uh, the MNC uh, digital business, you know, we're extremely well positioned, both from a macro perspective uh, and also you know, if you look at the telecom, uh, the TMT industry trends in Indonesia, it's the largest economy in Southeast Asia. As the pandemic subsides, uh, you know, we think economic growth over 2022 to 2026 is just going to shoot through the roof. Uh, globally, a lot of investment is coming into this region. Uh, the middle class population in Indonesia is only increasing. I think it's expected to grow from roughly about, uh, in terms of our, our audience that consumes our content, from 74% to 81% of the population by, by 2026. Um, GDP is increasing, so that's good. Uh, you know, from 33% to 40, 47 or 48%, I think roughly. So there's more spending power. Uh, connectivity is increasing. That will help us as well. Uh, you know, the, the, the better the connectivity, the more the telcos reach users, the more broadband subscriptions come in, better for us as well. Uh, I think largely entertainment and storytelling has always been... Uh, a requirement or a need for, for the nation, whether it's good times or bad times, you always want to hear someone's story, you want to be entertained. And I think MNC Digital is extremely well positioned, you know, to be probably the one, one of the early decacons if we could go regional uh, with, you know, any partners in, in, in this area, purely because of the production capabilities. Indonesia is a huge creative workforce. Uh, a lot of countries have suffered from uh, costs because of this. Indonesia is still extremely cost uh, uh, positive. Uh, so we think a lot of content can be created. We could be the next Korea. Uh, we could easily be the next India as well because our costs and our creative capabilities are all aligned. You know, the government is doing a lot to promote this. Uh, and as a business, of course, we, we will leverage off this as well. So look forward to 2022. I think, you know, exciting uh, news coming up in the next quarter as well from us, performance-wise, financial-wise, partnerships-wise as well. And, and, you know, watch, watch the space. So thank you very much. And thank you all for your years as well. Uh, you know, for, you know, feel free to reach out to me uh, uh, and the investment team. I think we're all on LinkedIn uh, or if not on our press releases, so you can get, you can get hold of our uh, contacts from there. Thank you very much.
That's great, very well, Pa. We would like to thank Mr. Omar Giribaliaban, Investor Relations Director of PT MNC Digital Entertainment Tebeka for bringing today's meeting. For your information, the upcoming group meeting at 11 a.m. today will be PT MNC Capital Indonesia Tebeka. We also organize a full day virtual conference that welcome all participants to attend presentation from Indonesia policies makers and financial services regulators who will share their views on the latest post-pandemic recovery update. For your information, we still open the registration for Macro Day, the closing event that will be held on March 17, 2022. For more information and online registration, you can visit the website www.mncinvestorforum.com. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's meeting and thank you to all participants for attending the group meeting today. See you in the next session. Have a good day.